Okay, so today I've got this piece. As you can see, it's a very beautiful piece. I brought it down from this digging spot, and this was one of the larger chunks. And let me just show you it. Look at those patterns. It's got some gorgeous patterns of obvious, like, you know, minerals formed in those crevices. Looks like there was a high silica content in there. I'm um, not sure if there's anything else to show, but let's just show as much as we can. Okay. The black coating on top. And what I'm looking at today is actually radiation from this thing. So I have two devices here. I have a simple Geiger counter, sort of on the mid to cheap end price range. Okay, it's just reading the background rate right now. 30 actually over there, the background rate was higher, but cool. Okay, and then I have a scintillator. Okay, different Skyger counter scintillator. It's a Radio Code scintillator, and this is the GMC 500 Plus Geiger counter. So watch this. I take my Geiger and set it on this baby. Let's see what happens. It gets excited. Okay, so a little bit of activity there. Nothing really crazy, but definitely higher than the background, right? For the Geiger counter. Just detecting something. Let's see what the uh, scintillator looks like. Now it's gonna drop back down immediately. All right, Mr. Scintillator, let's see what you do on here. And actually, let's... Yes, so that's our different readings. Let's stick with clicks, uh, counts from that here. Sit it back there and see what it does. Okay. Mm. Not sure if I can keep the light on, but hopefully it's still visible. <clears throat> Knocked itself down. So as you can see, scintillator gets really excited and reads a lot more. That's 1.3, but it's it's over a thousand counts per minute. You can see it's KPM there. So let me get this back in. I got a glare there. So my assumption is that the scintillator is detecting different different radiation than what the Geiger is able to detect. 
probably gamma, from my understanding. This is this uh, radio code scintillator is supposed to have a, an isotope identifier. Um, I really just got it. I've been playing around with it. I happen to have this chunk, and I didn't know much about this chunk of rock. Um, I actually didn't expect such such a spicy response, but um, if I can play around with the isotope identifier, maybe we can look at a graph and get some data and see if we can verify any kind of uranium that might be giving off. I'm not sure. Might be giving off gamma. So, I wonder if that's the highest. Idea. So that's the alarm going off. It's a. Uh, you can set the alarms to whatever you want. Um, it was just a preset, actually. I haven't messed with the alarm setting, so that's the first alarm. Yeah. So, when I was messing with it, you can set it to... Mm, change the... Well, I should be able to... Unlock it. Yeah, okay, so then I can read the sieverts. Let's see what they go up to again. Let's just take a look at the difference in the, in the sieverts. going on today. <clears throat> then I'll come back to this. Geiger's over here sitting pretty away from the, the rock source. I do want to put it back on there though and you can see the reading. It's probably not going to read as good being next to this but it will go up a little bit. Um, it depends on what tube maybe. I like have the tube in contact with that material. Oh it's getting excited so it's, it, it vibrates. Um, but we can compare the so point two. It's going up on here, so it's not quite up there. That's giving us a point two nine. This is still climbing. Point two five. It was I saw, but it's see, it's not as high as it was when it was set up there. I was just wanted to compare the measurement of the Sieverts. Let's see if the Geiger decides to go back up. What are we at? 0.3 and 0.28. The jumping back and forth is kind of driving me nuts. I'm not sure how I can get it to stop doing that. 0.26. Now we're getting... Hmm. See, now we're getting differences still, even with this. So, so the millisieverts were closer um, before. 0.27, now 0.45, and this is going up. But at least the Mosieverts are closer. Uh, but still, a little bit more on this one, though. So there we have it, just a little example of a rock that I actually didn't even know too much about. A little chunk here. It's got something interesting going on. And we're starting to compare the Geiger counter versus the scintillator. And these are two fairly affordable, portable devices. So that's why I'm, I'm working with these just to see the difference between these, what these new ones can do. And it's kind of interesting. I do have to work out the discrepancies and I do have to get the isotope identifier going on this. So I'll work on that and we'll show you some more.